So, Colorado Vegas, eh? What a game that was. 7-1 to one Colorado in game number one. The two top teams in the entire NHL in terms of their overall standings. And, you know, yesterday's game was just an absolute assertion of dominance from the Avs. We had Kale McCarr go out there, get four points. We had Nathan McKinnon shattering ankles and going out there making things happen. Three-point night for him as well as Gabe Landeskog. The Colorado Avalanche just did not come out here with any speck of doubt, hesitation, or anxiety in their own game plan. They have guys who are so good out there doing their thing, and it's pretty much all throughout the lineup. Even without Nazem Kadri, this team is still so dangerous throughout their offensive core. Their D core is amongst the best in the league. Kale McCarr, Graves, Gerard, you have Devon Taves. These guys are all incredible, and they're so good to the fact that I just wanted to talk about the Avalanche today as well as the Vancouver Canucks, and not really the Golden Knights. Screw the Golden Knights. We don't want to talk about the Golden Knights. Yeah, we're going to talk about the Avs and the Canucks, because whenever I think of Colorado, even though I'm supposed to think of a team that's really good on top of the league, is this, is that, the other thing, we all know how good Colorado is. Every time I think about the Colorado Avalanche, as a biased Canucks fan over here on the west coast of B.C., I always think back to 2016-17, because in 2016-17, the Colorado Avalanche were the worst team in the NHL, statistically speaking. They were dead last in the league. I think of this primarily because in 2017, the Vancouver Canucks were also one of the worst teams in the league. In fact, they were second last. So in my mind's eye, whenever I think about 2017, I always think immediately, okay, Colorado is last. Vancouver is second last. These two teams are the worst teams in the NHL. And in that draft, we all know what happened in that 2017 NHL entry draft. Colorado took Kale McCarr fourth overall. Vancouver took Elias Pettersson fifth overall. And those were two extraordinarily good picks. Arguably the two best players in that draft taken at fourth and fifth. But after that season where Colorado finished last and Vancouver was second last things kind of took a little bit of a different turn. Let's go over onto Twitter and check out Rodney Gibson 604 Lord Humongous of Vancouver, his account over here, because he posted a Twitter thread of Joe Sackick versus Jim Benning, taking a look at the two teams, where they have been in the previous few years, and where they are today. Now, I will say, this argument, this idea, this conversation, it's all in a vacuum. It's just taking a look at pure numbers, doesn't take a look at any of the trades, acquisitions, opportunities, and all that. That's a different conversation here. But just as a conversational piece in terms of the standings and the numbers behind it, let's go over the Canucks and the Avalanche here. In 2016-17, the Colorado Avalanche were last place in the league with 48 points. The Canucks were second last with 69 points. Firstly, nice. Secondly, yeah, the gap was that big. Vancouver was second last in the NHL with 69 points, which was 21 above Colorado's. In fact, Arizona as well as New Jersey were right there in the mix too. They both had 70 points. So Vancouver being one point back put them as the second worst team. It's why they ended up with the fifth overall spot and Colorado with the fourth, because neither Colorado nor Vancouver ended up winning the draft lottery that year. Still kind of salty about that, but hey, it is what it is. The next year, though, things get a little bit different, because no longer is it Vancouver ahead by 21 points. In 2017-2018, the Colorado Avalanche exploded for 95 points on the year. Nathan McKinnon went out there on a mission, and he was like, yeah, I'm good, right? I can be good. I can be really, really good. Let's go out there and score 97 points, and Miko Rantanen broke out as a point-per-game star. Landeskog was still great. Tyson Berry was there, too, doing his thing. 57 points in 68 games for Berry. Incredible season for the Avalanche, immediately after being last. Vancouver, on the other hand, were still kind of in that transitory phase. Brock Besser made his debut in 2017-18. He helped them out a little bit, but they only really improved by four points. Colorado, on the other hand, improved significantly. They literally doubled their point production from the previous year. In 2018-19, you still see Vancouver getting a little bit better, 
73 points in 2018, 81 points in 2019. Colorado still hanging around that range. They got 90 points in 2018-19. The year after that, though, things get a little bit down for Vancouver. Because in 2019-20, the Canucks finished with a 78-point pace, which was indeed worse than what they did the previous year. Colorado finishes with 92 points, pretty good for them, seeing them still stay in that top-of-the-league-ish kind of territory. Now in 2020-2021, the Colorado Avalanche wrapped up the season with 82 points, tied for first in the league with Vegas, whom they absolutely just spanked yesterday. And you have the Vancouver Canucks, who wrapped up the season with 50 points. Minus 30 on the number chart right here, as the Canucks ultimately went from a team that was so much better than Colorado in 2017 to a team that is so, so, so much worse. And I know it's easy to say, Lego, you're just kind of pulling a straw man here because you can compare Colorado to any team from 2017 until now and take a look at how things shaped up differently. Because if Colorado was last in 2017, their first in 2021, they're going to have a winning record over any of the teams that you take a look at in the span, right? Well, the reason it's Colorado specifically is because they were so close, man. The timeline of things are so intertwined in terms of the timelines of being bad to how quickly they turned it around and became good. You even have the timelines of the GMs. Joe Sackick was hired by the Avalanche in September of 2014. Jim Benning was hired by the Canucks in May of 2014. These two GMs came into the league at the same time. Sure, they were both faced with rebuilding bad teams, which is why they were the two worst teams in the NHL in 2017. But take a look at all the moves that Sackick did to eventually turn his team into a powerhouse and contrast that to Jim Benning. It makes me kind of sad acknowledging that these two teams were at the bottom of the bottom just a few years ago, and now one is so far up and removed from the other. I get it. There's contextual factors to this for sure. Colorado was in a position where they went out there, they had disgruntled stars like Matt Duchesne, who were begging to be traded. What did they do? They held out on trading Duchesne, kept him around for a bit, but when they did trade Duchesne, oh man, that trade became Samuel Girard, Bowen Byram, boom, what a great pick right there. What else did they do? Hey, they traded two second round picks for Devon Taves. They also traded a non-NHL player for Ryan Graves. The fact is, they were really ambitious with what exactly it was they wanted to do. Joe Sackick's plan was put into place, and they took the necessary risks to get that done. Jim Benning is a guy whom we've spoken about a ton before. The guy doesn't really like to make trades. He was one of the most inactive GMs on the trade front the previous few years, and it's not like he's absolutely terrible at trades. Thomas Vanek for Tyler Mott and Yusi Jokinen wasn't the best because people were expecting him to acquire picks for Vanek, which didn't end up happening. However, Tyler Mott's still here a few years later, and he's doing pretty all right. You have the JT Miller trade, which actually is looking pretty all right with hindsight. It's just it was still a massive risk when you ended up making that trade. Furthermore, Dahlin for Burroughs, Hansen for Goldolben. If these prospects worked out, then hey, they could have been amazing moves for the organization. Good Branson for Pearson also wasn't bad. It's just the quantity of these trades and who exactly they decide to put out there that is the question here. Verbata and Hamuse, these two guys could have been traded away for assets. Nope, they stuck around and eventually left in free agency. Tyler Toffoli, similar thing. You traded prospects and futures for Toffoli, and now he's gone. You could chalk it all up to money and all that other stuff. Oh, we don't have enough cap space, this and that, but that's still an error of the GM himself. The Canucks were in a position where their overall plan was kind of changing day by day. As Benning said, we live day by day. A few weeks ago, he said they have a two-year plan to be competitive. Now it's, oh, we want to make the playoffs this year. It's so strange to take a look at the contrast between Joe Sackick, who has built a team pretty much from scratch. He took over in 2014. McKinnon was drafted in 2013, so a lot of what the Avalanche have done already has been a product of Sackick himself. Ranton and drafted in 2015, for example. It's just so frustrating, man. Colorado was bad. Vancouver was bad. Colorado's now good. Vancouver is still bad. <sighs> Avs fans, I envy you guys. Being a Canucks fan is rough. Talk to me in the comments what you thought about this video. I know it's kind of asinine to talk about this kind of thing, comparing two GMs or whatever, but still, it's right there.
They were both so bad in 2017, and now one's the best in the league, the other one is still one of the worst teams in the league. Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls and I and I and bye.